Okay, let's take a look at conditional probability. So the symbol here is read the probability of A given B. That vertical bar is read given. So the probability of A given B is the probability of A happening given that event B has already occurred. So we already have the information that B has already happened. And it's equal to the joint probability of A and B the probability of both of them occurring, divided by the marginal probability of just B. So let's take a look at one from the table here. Let's find from the table the probability of C given E. Well, to find the probability of C given E, it would be the joint probability of C and E divided by the marginal probability of E, the one is conditioned on. And that's equal to, well, the joint probability of C and E comes from this row and column where C and E intersect. That cell right there is 110, and that's, I'm sorry, is 10, and that's 10 out of 110. 10 out of the total, 110. On the other hand, the marginal probability of E comes from right here the sum of all this entire row, 29, 4, and 10, which is 43 out of 110. 43 out of 110. And as you'll see, every time you do this, the grand total will cancel. And all you're really looking at is the intersection number, which is 10, over the sum of that row number, which is 43. It could also be the sum of a column if you're conditioned on one of the columns instead of one of the rows. Now this probability, this probability is approximately equal to uh, 23 percent is 0.2326. So that's the probability of C given that we already know E has occurred. What I want to do now is I want to find the inverted probability there, which is the probability of E given C. So I want to invert that probability and find the probability of E given that C has already occurred. Now, just like before, all I really have to do is look at the intersection of E and C, which we already had as 10 the intersection of E and C, but then I have to divide by the sum of the column C. So here's column C, that's 53. 53. Now, it would have been 10 over 110 and 53 over 110, but the 110s, like we said before, will cancel. And this is approximately equal to 19%, percent point one eight eight seven. So it turns out that this doesn't go in both directions. You can't, the probability of C given E is not the same as the probability of E given C. All right, let's try some more there. So we have those. Let's try the probability of uh, B given D. So for the probability of B given D, by definition, that's going to be the probability of B and D divided by the probability of D. So it's conditioned on D, which means I look at the intersection of row and column where B and D intersect. So here's B, here's D, the intersection is 19. And I have to divide that by the sum or the total of row D. So row D, if I total it, I get 67. So that's 19 out of 67, or roughly 28%. Point 0.2836. And if we were doing the inverted version of that, the probability of D given B, well, it's the same thing. I look for D and B, which happens to be the same exact thing as B and D. But then in this case, I'm dividing by the probability of B 
because in this case it's conditioned on B instead. So the top is the same, 19, still the intersection of row um, D and column B, so it's still 19. But now I'm looking for the sum of column B, which is 23. So this is equal to uh, approximately 83%. Uh, this is 0 0.8261. Okay, so that's how you find uh, conditional probabilities.